right, guys, here we are with another episode of Let's Talk Reef. Uh, I'm actually laughing just as I came in here because uh, we're joined by Gary Humphreys, who says, I just spent 800 bucks. Can I get a shirt or a hat? <laughs> Uh, I love that these things, these live streams involve you guys, and uh, you know this is a great format. We're glad to do it. Um, we we love coming back every couple of weeks and bringing you guys some new content. We hope that you enjoy it. Um, let's get right in it today. I've got some good stuff. I don't think it's going to be as long as last week. Uh, we've got only a couple of things lined up, but it's something that uh, people ask about all the time, which is how do I add another tank or uh, mixing station or water mixing station or whatever to my apex. What are the things that I need or I need to do? Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that today. First a few housekeeping things as people start to roll in. Uh, other people asking for shirts there. Uh, thanks for joining us. First of all, the uh, next show, just so you guys can mark your calendars, next show is uh, April 9th. So we do these every other Tuesday. Uh, at uh, 5 p.m. It's Pacific Daylight Time now, 8 p.m. Pacific or Eastern Daylight Time. Um, we're also going to be at Aquashella. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So we're going to be live at Aquashella, which is going to be really fun. Um, you're only going to be able to know about these things, though, if you like and subscribe. So like our page, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure that you go out there and you know do what you need to do to see it first to have it highlighted, to get the notifications. If you subscribe on YouTube, make sure you hit that little bell. You have to do all of those things and then you're gonna get the notice and you won't miss a show because it's more fun when it's live. You can always watch these back because uh, we have the recorded versions out on YouTube uh, if you've missed an episode or on Facebook both. Uh, but it's definitely more fun live and you can only win some of the swag if you're here live and if you stay until the last 15 minutes. So if you guys are in here right now and you want some of those free shirts or free hats or other swag, you gotta stick with us. You'll like it, don't worry. And speaking of swag, who are our winners? So last week um, we picked a couple of people to get some t-shirts or uh, cool towels to clean your aquarium. The winners this week are Chris Chick, Sick, I don't know. It's somebody knows how to pronounce that name. I'm sorry, buddy. I have a name that's just uh, as hard for people to pronounce. And Sasha Matir. Uh, thank you guys for joining us last time. And you guys have some stuff coming out to you uh, probably in a week or so. Uh, some cool things. So if you guys want to get free stuff, free swag, definitely hang on for these shows. Stay through to the end. And we always pick a couple of people. Next up, how about our US tour? We're already cranking through a lot of great shows. Um, we are now into the, the, the big shows of the season. So this week, uh, Thursday, I'll be leaving to go to Dallas, Texas um, so that we can start a show there on Saturday. It's called Aquashella. It's kind of like rave meets uh, saltwater aquariums, meets freshwater aquariums, meets, I think, other animals, artists, all kinds of uh, really cool things, lots of neon. I uh, just saw a great thing on, you, on uh, Facebook the other day of a, uh, a time lapse of a guy that did this great mural that broke it down into, into pieces and they're going to put it back up over there. So it's, it's not like any other reef keeping show. This is going to be my first Aquashella. They've been doing them up in Chicago. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think uh, it's going to go great. The best part about Aquashella, well, let me get some pictures here. I'll show you some of these pictures. One of the best parts about Aquashella, there you go. You can see there's a little neon, lots of corals. Um, and uh, one of the cool things is they've got that theme, and we're going to go with the theme a little bit. I'm bringing a couple of bean bags, and I'm bringing our camera and our microphones, and if any of you guys out there happen to be in the, uh, the Dallas area, stop by Aquashella, come by the booth. If you've got a great Apex story to tell, see me, and let's go have a talk about it on Let's Talk Reef Aquashella style, and I'll have some free swag for you. So... Definitely come out to the show, see me, and get on Let's Talk Reef. Okay, what else? Reefa Palooza. Reefa Palooza is coming up. It's coming up for Orlando on April 6th and 7th. Um, this is a show, I don't know, we've done it five times in Orlando, I think, already, maybe. Since its inception, we've done the show in Orlando. It's a great event, lots of incredible corals down there. Uh, the guys at Worldwide Corals put the event on. Uh, we always put on a great show ourselves, fun stuff to do in the area. 
come on by. If you need a family vacation and you're not from Florida, this is a great show to go to. All right. Of course, uh, one last plug here for the guys at MACNA. It is the biggest event of the year, the most amount of content. Uh, we do our own little breakfast event there where we have hundreds of people come, hair talks, we do some, uh, some giveaways. Definitely come out to MACNA. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, buy your tickets, get your hotel rooms, they're going fast. Um, you're not gonna wanna miss out on this show. Let's see, we have any other questions over here? Ba -ba -ba. Congratulations to the winners. I used my new Apple credit card to buy another core. Woo, got that. Well, you didn't get 3% back. You maybe got 1% or 2% back, but I heard all about that Apple card, so I might have to get me one of those. All right, local fish stores. So the local fish store shout out this uh, week is to Mad Reefer out of Melbourne, Florida. Mad Reefer is actually the, uh, the, the store, John there at the store uh, is gonna be helping us out at Reefapalooza. They're gonna be setting up our, our tank out there. We've got a really cool six foot tank, um, really beautiful tank. Uh, it's actually gonna come back here to the office and become Kurt's tank in his office. So come out and see us there. Come out and see Mad Reefer at his store. Uh, you can talk to him at our booth, talk to him about Apex, talk to him about fish, uh, but definitely a shout out to Mad Reefer. Thanks for being one of our dealers. All right. The question that's always comes up, of course, though, is what about the Trident? I guess I gotta take a drink of water before this. Yes, you will see it at Reefapalooza, and you will see it at Aquashella. Um, and this week, we've got a whole other group of them coming out. Wow, I have a picture and I didn't load it up here. Um, I will put it on the thread for this uh, stream when it comes out. I have a picture of a whole cart full of uh, Tridents that are gonna be going out to the uh, next group of our NSI, our Neptune Systems Insiders. Um, the results thus far have been really good. The guys have been super quiet because it just works. Uh, and you know we made some tweaks and we definitely have taken some advantage of having these uh, you know high-end reef keepers taking a look at the product uh, way before anybody else and allowing us to make some tweaks and now we got another group of people that we're gonna be getting them out to so you're gonna hear even more about it don't have a release date for you yet I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a release date announcement not too far off into the future but I'm not allowed to say anything yet um, definitely good stuff happening here at Neptune Systems. And I love my Trident. Man, it's so awesome with the calcium reactor. Gosh, got to tell you. All right. Paul, don't laugh too hard over there. Now, uh, one of the things I like to do on these shows is not just talk about Neptune stuff when, when I get a chance. Talk about other things about reef keeping, things that I've found or Paul's found or, or people that we know have found that are going to help you out in reef keeping. Um, one of the things that landed on my desk after Russ gave it back to me after like a year and I loaned it to him, uh, he's been using it for looking at circuit board defects and stuff, is this little microscope. It's a USB microscope. This is one of the handiest little things that um, I've used in a crunch on a reef tank. And you're probably thinking, why would I use this? This is for inspecting frags. This is for inspecting your corals for all sorts of pests. So let me show you something here. This is a picture, thank you to Meliv, melivsreef.com, a little plug to him. This is one of his pictures taken with, I don't know if you use this exact microscope camera or not, but um, these are similar pictures to the ones I've gotten before when I've had red bugs or acro eating flatworms. You can actually see the eggs, um, you know, egg sacs and whatnot on the bottom of a, of a frag. Um, the, the, the thing is really easy to use. It's got a zoom on it, so you can zoom in. They say to a thousand times. I don't know if it's really to a thousand times. It's got a little button on here with some LEDs so you can light it up and you can get these really great photos uh, to see if you've got any kind of pests or um, maybe some weird strange algae or a tiny little polyp of a aptasia, um, whatever you want. The really, really, really cool thing about it is you can't believe how cheap they are. Okay, less than 20 bucks for one of these. So as far as value and reef keeping and having something around when you don't know whether or not you're going to need it, get one of these. It's just cool to take pictures sometimes too of just the polyps up close, um, get some of these fun photos. So uh, go out to Amazon, there's a bunch of different styles of them. I don't think you're gonna go wrong for 20 bucks and add it to your little uh, collection of geeky toys to go along with all your Apex gear. All right, so next up, Adding another tank. So what I'd like, let's see, do we have any questions first? 
Somebody says they've got the five megapixel uh, Celestron one, that it works well at Celestron telescopes. Um, borescopes are super useful. So a lot of good advice out there from you guys. Um, let's see here. Somebody saw us at the Niagara show. And yes, Jaden, we always do need uh, more NSIs, but we have quite a list right now. But I will give you some insight. When I don't find enough people on the list that we have, before I go out and do a call for everybody, the people that are on Let's Talk Reef, I go out and look at their uh, profiles on Facebook, see if they're doing stuff with their uh, apexes, see how involved they are. And I do know that we have two people um, that are very active in our Let's Talk Reef uh, episodes who are going to be on the next group of NSI, and they weren't in the NSI group registered. I brought them in special. So I'm not going to say who those people are, um, but once they get their trident, they're going to be super happy that they were tuning in to Let's Talk Reef. So let's talk about adding stuff to your tank. Or, sorry, adding apexes to another tank. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me uh, in a way that I used uh, extending out my apex, let's just say, was when I had a water mix station. It wasn't as cool and complicated as this one uh, that you're seeing on the, on the picture here. This guy has obviously a couple of modules here. He's doing what looks like an automatic uh, ongoing water change uh, with a dose. He's got some cool gray and, uh, and orange plumbing. He's definitely heavily invested in the Neptune Systems brand, so I love it. Um, I, I don't remember the photo credit or I'd give it, so I apologize to whoever's this is, but you have a great setup. Uh, definitely, if you see yourself on here, put your notes in the comments and I'll give you a good shout out on the next one. Uh, but what you can do is obviously you have your apex, it's in another room, and you want to do monitoring of, let's say, the temperature or controlling a pump or uh, even monitoring the salinity or uh, doing a, um, uh, a solenoid valve like, you know, like this guy right here on your water make station. One of the real key advantages to the apex, and for all you guys that are apex, uh, most of you on here already have an apex, the great decision that you made is that the apex is heavily modular. So you, can, you don't have to go buy a whole big box to put cards in. You don't have to buy an entirely different controller to go monitor your water station. You can buy some parts and pieces, extend a wire over there, and now have a completely different setup that's all controlled with the same apex. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. And a water mix station is a perfect example. Um, some of the things that you might want to consider in a water mix station, uh, we have over here, I think, uh, a PM1. So PM1 is a probe module one. It's one of our original probe modules. We've had these forever. It can do pH or ORP, um, and it also does temperature. And so the number one thing people like to do is to obviously monitor the temperature and somewhat pH as well. Um, but what's really cool is it also has a six input uh, port on here for switches. Um, if you don't want to get our FMM and optical switches and you just want to use float switches like these guys right here, you can see these if you're familiar with them. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So if you want to just use a float switch, you can get this uh, uh, breakout box, okay, or bob, right? Uh, some people call it. And you can attach these float switches so in your water mix container, you can know when the water's high or the water's low, and it goes right into the PM1. Um, it's not a very expensive module. I believe it's $75 and you can for 30 bucks get a temperature probe and for another 30 or 40 bucks you get the breakout box. So you now have the ability to monitor temperature and monitor some float switches on your water make station. If you wanted to take it a step further, you could get an energy bar four, which I'm probably messing up Paul's setup over here. Maybe I won't show it to you, but you can get the energy bar four uh, and uh, use that to turn on and off your mix pump uh, uh, on the station. You could, for instance, set up a, uh, a cycling mix on there. So say every hour it just comes on for five minutes just to keep it kind of mixed up. Uh, one of the reasons I suggest the Energy Bar 4 is you probably don't have eight things that you want to connect. Uh, also, the Energy Bar 4 uses all relays. So that means if you have low power devices like, uh, like that use small transformers like a, a solenoid valve or whatnot, it can switch those and not have to worry about them not getting switched on or off, which sometimes happens with some of the solid state outlets on the Energy Bar 8. 
so you can get the Energy Bar 4. It's another $110, I think, or $120. Uh, and now you can switch on and off that pump automatically. It's pretty neat that for maybe two or $300, you can add all this functionality to your Apex in another room. Now, when we get to Tech Corner, Paul is going to show you how to, to actually configure some of these things and to set it up in your dashboard. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. Like I said, this isn't going to be a super long show today. Uh, next use, though, is very common, is a quarantine tank. If you guys don't have a quarantine tank, um, I highly suggest that you do if you're bringing in fish. Um, there's various, um, obviously, levels of quarantine that people do. Some people do a whole you know, set of uh, things that they add to the water to kill off things. Other people, like myself, may just leave fish in there for two or three weeks and, and see how they do and observe them and see if they have anything going on with them. But it doesn't cost that much to get a quarantine tank. And once you do, you can monitor that quarantine tank. Again, for just a couple of hundred dollars, you can get uh, the pH, you know, with the PM1 again, with a temperature probe. Um, you can add another Energy Bar 8 or Energy Bar 4 to it. Uh, one of the other things to consider here too, if you haven't already upgraded from the previous Apex, uh, maybe you have an Apex Gold system, which came with the, uh, the PM Module 2 for salinity uh, and obviously came with an Energy Bar 8. You might want to take that equipment and move it over to your older tank and hook it up to, or sorry, your quarantine tank and hook it up to the new Apex uh, without, you know, really any cost. You've now got salinity monitoring, you've got temperature monitoring, you've got the six switch inputs, and you have an energy bar that you can use for that uh, quarantine tank. Um, very handy. Obviously, having the energy bar and the temp probe allows you to do the temperature control on that tank which obviously is very important. You've got new expensive fish coming in. Uh, so definitely uh, quarantine tanks are a really popular thing for people to add more gear to their Apex for it to monitor and control. All right, let's see here. Let's see if we have any other good questions or comments. Uh, Jaden Jan Panetta says, it's nice to be a block away from our office. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, maybe, Jaden, you come in here and want to see us uh, film an episode live when we get into our new space. Oh, that's something else I didn't even mention. We've got some new space going in. Um, I've got a completely new filming room that we have. We painted it a week ago, um, gray and orange and white. Uh, so the next episode of Let's Talk Reef is going to be in the new studio. I don't know that I'll have everything set up exactly the way I want it yet, uh, but it is kind of cool. Let's see here. Other... Let's see here, Trident. Somebody said Trident would be a great tool for older reefers above 70 years. What is that? I don't even, I don't even get that. I have, I have uh, color blindness, so I already get that it's hard to tell the colors. Um, let's see, people talking about the breakout box, talking about uh, the, the ATK. Okay, no other real questions yet. So if you guys have questions, great feedback. I love getting all the feedback, but if you have a question. Um, oh, here's a question from Adam Moore. Let's take this one real quick. Adam Moore says, will the old Apex head unit connect to my new system? No, it will not connect to your new system in terms of you can't take your new Apex and your old head unit and then connect them on the same Aquabus. Um, that said, you can take the components other than the head unit, right, from your uh, Apex Classic, and you can connect those to your newer Apex. So there you go. All right, next uh, situation, just to quickly touch on it, where you might want to add more gear is a frag tank. So a lot of people add on another little frag tank, or maybe they even call it a quarantine tank for coral. Maybe it's just a place where they store stuff that they're going to trade with their buddies. Um, again, Lots of different modules you can add to it. Many times these tanks are, are right close to your existing tank. Uh, but know that even if you have a tank that's, uh, let's say you put a tank in your kid's room, uh, you know, two doors down in the hallway, you can add that one on as well. And we'll talk about uh, how to do that with Paul. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the gear also. Uh, I talked about enough of that. Ba -ba -ba. Just try to go through everything. Oh, FMM module. So an FMM module is also something that's really handy to add onto a secondary tank. Again, if you want to, uh, you know, monitor flow on that tank or leak detection, you can add those as well. OK. 
Okay. Pretty much, I think I hit almost on everything, and then we'll probably get into the rest of it all with Paul, because uh, we're going to talk about which cables. I'll talk about those with Paul. Probably it's probably easier to do that, because um, there's a lot of different cable choices out there for you, both from us, um, and there's some from other people, too. I think that'll make a good conversation with Paul. Let's see here if we've got one other. Oh, somebody asked a great question here. Excellent question. So glad. Why can't I go over there anymore? Oh, there we go. Question says, is, this is Zachary Holtmeyer. Um, thank you for bringing this up, Zach, because I, I want to touch on Is there a way to wirelessly connect tanks in a separate room? My fish room in the house and the display tank are about 50 feet apart. Um, actually, on the same apex, there is no way to wirelessly connect up modules. Um, it's a conscientious decision, conscious decision that we made uh, to not create a wireless module to module type system because there is too much chance for these things to become disconnected and out of sync and create all sorts of problems when you're dealing with wireless devices. When you're turning on or off your lights in your house um, or your TV or something like that, when it doesn't work, it's just a little bit irritating. Um, when your tank doesn't work or dies because some module didn't connect when it should wirelessly, not something we're comfortable with. Uh, that said, if you have something that is more distant away, many times our suggestion to you, even from a cost perspective, is to get another Apex. I know it sounds like we're, you know, I'm here saying, I'll just buy another Apex. Um, but now with the Apex EL, it's $500, you get another energy bar 832, you get the pH probe, you get the temp probe, you get the Apex, and it's on Wi-Fi. Uh, so if you're in that situation, for us, rather than buying you know, a bunch of modules and then being wireless and possibly disconnecting, um, you probably want to go with another Apex. So I hope that, uh, hope that answers your question. Um, another person, Rito Kramer, asked the same thing. Can we get a wireless connection to the garage? The garage is 100 feet away, and I've got a pond. We'll get into some of that, I think, with, uh, with, uh, with Paul. We've got Devin Rich in the house. Thanks, Devin, for coming, man. And what did I see here? Something about Scott Kramer being here? Scott Kramer is in the house? No way. Oh, did I say Scott? No, Scott Kramer. Scott Crow. Scott Crow, sorry. Oh my God, it's Scott Crow in the house. Anyway, if you guys don't, don't watch his uh, live stream, he's got a great live stream up there in, what's this live stream called, Paul? Come on, come on. ORA, uh, something, oh gosh, he's gonna kill me. All right, I guess you're gonna have to have me on your program there, Scott, and, uh, and just totally give it to me there. Uh, Chris is on here, he won some swag today. Uh, now lots of questions. Good. So we've got Paul coming in here. I'm going to go ahead and kick it into the corner here, uh, the tech corner with Paul. We're going to put on our famous tech corner music and get Paul in here. Keep on reefing. There it is. K-O-R. Keep on reefing. Okay, there we go. Good. All right. Let's see. Now let's get into the tech corner. Here we are again, Paul, the tech corner. Hey, how's it going? Chris? Everybody loves the music. Come on, yeah. Chris. Oh, man. And somebody said that that was a good Scott impression. So thank you for that. That was uh, Macy's Daddy 777. I, I, I thought you were having a seizure for a moment. <laughs> yeah, it well, good. it's just like, oh, my God, Paul. I, Tell I us love, all I, about it. I love that show. I, <laughs> I love it, too. The, the, the energy there is. Uh, it, it's all probably, of our shows, we've got to be talking about each other, you know? We I, have to, yeah, you know? It's his, it's his gig, right? So, all right, so we're going to be talking about what today, Paul? Multiple tanks, right, Terrence? Yep. So you've been chit-chatting ch about here for mm -hmm. a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, when people want to add multiple tanks to an Apex, right, um, you know, we're talking about different components and all these sorts of different things. And um, 
Sometimes when you add more components, you're adding more complexity, right? Right, you for know? sure. And so there is, whenever you're approaching something with more complexity, there's, all, there's a better way to do it in which you take out a lot of that complexity. Okay. Right? And so I'm just going to kind of go through some of the things that you do um, in order to make that an easy process that we hope that you'll have. And I, think like it, I, I think what I was ending with in the, in the last segment before you came on um, with the question about somebody saying, you know, Wi-Fi and another yeah. room and there's a hundred foot thing, you really have to consider what is it you want to do in, mm -hmm. the, in the whole big picture. How many modules do you, do you think you're going to add? Yeah. How far is it going to be away? Do I really want them in the same dashboard? Right. Do I want a little extra redundancy because this is a really important tank? Yeah. So there are considerations to have. I mean, we're talking about you know getting modules and things to extend out mm -hmm. your apex today, but sometimes it's just a better idea to add another apex. Again, yeah. I mean, my rule of my rule of thumb is when you're talking about um, adding another, adding more things, right? I typically don't like to go more than 60 feet, mm -hmm. right? Unless it's just a water station and maybe you have piping running that way anyways and you can just run the wire with okay. the piping. Um, I think it's sometimes better when you add up the cost of the uh, additional, mo of the cabling, right? You add up the modules you're going to purchase. It might be just better to go with the second apex, right? Right. Um, and I mean, maybe you'll spend a little bit more, but... Um, I mean, we've seen some cra crazy setups where yeah. people should have split them into two or three different apexes. Right. Because if, if you do have a problem, you do have the lightning strike or you do have something happen, mm -hmm. You have everything go down, not just one of them. Exactly right, and so um, and we get we you know one thing I do a lot you know that we don't talk about here that often is we do a lot of uh, research and things like that where we want to replicate the same thing over multiple 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 tanks. I'm talking forty setups that are all going to be the same. I typically don't put forty apexes, forty forty pm ones on one apex. It's right. Just a little bit more than you want to manage. Well, you're right? talking about we, we have stuff in uh, in public aquariums for quarantine systems, and we yeah. have stuff in science. We have it at the Frost Museum in um, in Florida, right? They're yeah. doing scientific experiments with the apex stuff, and they often come to us and say uh, straight up, "Yeah, I, w I want an apex, and then I want to get 32 of these PM1 modules." Right. And we're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" So you just have to consider this all up front. Yeah. I think the first thing to really get to people is okay. So I have my apex here, mm -hmm. and I, I have my other tank here. And so it's a, there's a point to point that I can go. What's the longest point to point I can go? Well, um, technically about 100 feet. Okay. okay? Um, I wouldn't ever really go more than 100 feet. And generally the rule of thumb is when you're doing 100 feet or more, or 60 feet or more, as I say, you always want to make sure that you go from energy bar to energy bar. Okay. So that means the aquabus cable that's going to connect those two different areas together, you're, going, you're connecting that aquabus from an energy bar to an energy bar. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's say I'm not going 60 feet. Okay. okay? I'm going 25 feet. Can I go 25 feet to my water make station mm -hmm. and just have a PM1 there coming right from my Apex 832? Absolutely. 25 feet I wouldn't be worried about. Rule so, so the idea is, let me just try to clarify. Yeah. So the idea is when we get to 60 feet, right? Mm -hmm. It's a wire. There's voltage going across the wire. Right. You get what's called a voltage drop. Yep. At least that's mm -hmm. what, how Kurt explained it to me. And so what you want to do is each one of these devices, these energy bars, right, they have a transformer in them mm -hmm. that creates the power for the Aquabus connection, exactly. right? Yep. And so what you need is it's like a booster. Right. That's the best way to think about it is it's, it's like it's, a booster. It's the best way to think about it. And, you know, generally if you have an energy bar and you're going distance, just go energy bar to energy bar. If you're just going and adding a PM1, do that, right? If you're adding a dose at the remote location, the dose has power. So it is going to boost that signal the same way. Okay. Does that make sense? No, that does. Absolutely. Because it's know? got its own little, it's got its own little one of these, right? Yeah, exactly. And then the other rule of thumb is, you know, don't have like 10, 12 PM1s, you know, in one energy bar for the whole system. Right. right. If you're going to do that, you also want to boost the signal a little bit. You can do that with our 12 volt back adapter. So now the next thing to understand, so we've got, okay, uh, under 60 feet, I can go without an energy bar at the other yeah. end. Mm -hmm. And once I get to 60 feet to 100 feet, I need to have that energy bar there. Mm -hmm. And then I can continue to go up to how far? Like, I, I can go from that, you know, like 60 foot. Now, I, can I go another 50 feet? Yes. And then I can go another energy bar there. Yes. And then I can go another 50 feet, right? Yes. Okay, up to that, 200, right? Yes, I was about to say that. You can have 200 feet of cabling total. In, okay. in one system. Okay. So at the point that you get to 200 feet of cable, right, that system is maxed out. So if you have three 60-foot runs in that system and you're going energy bar to energy bar to energy bar, you have 20 more feet you can work with. Okay. Okay? All right. Sense? Well, this, this is good because okay. I think this, these are some of the, like, hard facts 
that we get a lot of questions on that people want to know. Right. And I think any energy bar will work too, I mean, right? And an energy bar four or an energy, energy bar, bar eight. Basically, any aqua device, any aquabus device that has power. Right. Okay. So the FMM module. Oh, really? That yeah, too. Hey, guess what? It has a power supply. Oh, that's right. It's going to boost it, right? Yeah. You so get any, one of these any device that has um, uh, any any device that has that can do that. Um, and so uh, generally, also when you're working with this kind of cable, Terrence, mm -hmm. right? I don't suggest to put that cable into the wall, right? Hide it and everything like that before you test it out. Okay. Right. So the second part of the thing to consider when you're doing these remote stations is don't get everything nice and pretty. And some of the, again, I am constantly amazed by you control freaks. Your setups just blow my mind sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I'm. I, There's no doubt. Like I. I the wiring, I, the plumbing, right, everything. Exactly. And uh, so don't make it all pretty and everything before you test things out. Before you put that 60 foot cable into the wall. Right. Right. Um, make sure that that 60 foot cable works. Hang on one second. So somebody says we got to turn up a mic. I don't know whose mic would need turned up. It looks I like we're... I, think I, I think I heard mine. Oh, is it yours? Yeah. Okay. Go. I'll go do it. It's okay. We're live. It's no big deal. We'll turn up Paul's mic for him. He doesn't talk as loud as I do. All right. Test, test, test. Is that better? Go, Paul. Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Nope, you're dead. Am I? You are dead, man. All right, this is live TV. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, you're muted there, Paul. The, Paul, you want the, to switch that mute switch? No, the receiver's off. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. It's live TV. Hey. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not a problem. Sorry, I turned off. Who knows? <laughs> All right, can you? Are you oh, hearing battery, me? Battery. That's why. Can you hear me now? No. It's okay. Entertain him, Paul. Come on, even without a mic, you got my mic. Dancing, <laughs> dancing, Terrence. All right, here we go. Now we should have Paul. Yeah, there we go. Test, test. Is it showing up? Yep. We All got right. You now, Paul. So here's. Here's, I like, I like here's how you, live hold streaming on. 101. Hold on. I like how Terrence like, you didn't, you muted it. This is you. You did that, right? Well, it's so, never happened before. Yeah. This is live streaming 101. Live streaming 101. Check the batteries <laughs> and the wireless transceivers. All right. All right. Anyways, uh, so um, where I was was uh, make sure you, the cable works. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and uh, the second thing is if you're going to be adding multiple modules all at once, my rule of thumb is connect one module at a time, make sure it's working, okay. then connect the next, mo next module. Okay. okay. And so you so, don't get like 20 things in your module list and you're like, which one does which? Exactly. Especially if you're doing multiples of the same module, mm -hmm. right? So you, if you're putting two PM1s on, if you're putting two FMMs, if you're doing two energy bar eights, connect one of those energy bars, make sure that you know what it, what uh, mm -hmm. energy bar that is in your system and go from there. And I'll kind of get into a little bit of that in the So one other thing to, to, to also get straight to people too is, I, you know, we sell 30 foot cables, right? Yes. So we sell two kinds of cables. We sell the regular Aquabus cable, which is mail to mail, right? And then we, which is like this, right? Mm -hmm. This is mail to mail, right? Yep. And then we sell another cable, which is an extension cable, which mm -hmm. is mail to female. Yep. And those come in, in up to thirty foot lengths, right? And you can yep. obviously daisy chain a couple, a couple of those things together. Right. And I got one of the male female ones here, which we're going to connect up in just a Perfect. second. So. Now you can also get third party cables, but be careful because there's a lot of different cables. They will work. A lot of them will. So key uh, component is what? There's one key thing. They need to be passive cables right. with no repeaters. Right. Okay. And so if you go to Best Buy and you buy that 10 foot USB mail mail cable or that 15 foot Best Buy USB mail mail cable, it probably has an amplifier in it. Okay. USB operates at five volts. Mm -hmm. Aquabus operates at 12 volts. If you connect a five volt device to a 12 volt device, yeah. Good things typically don't happen in that situation. So uh, you have to make sure that they are passive cables. Okay. Right? All right. Um, so there's lots of ways to do that. No, this is a good stuff to get out because I know these are questions that a yeah. lot of people ask. Yes, yes. And, uh, do you have any other questions before you get started? Because we, we've got a little extra time today, so let's do make sure we get questions or we'll cool. have another mic go out. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Do, do, do. Uh, any plans on a shorter one link cables, maybe five or six feet? Well, we already have five or six foot cables, and I'm not going to be a spoiler. There's something coming up here that we'll have more info on. Um, on the one links, though? 
Oh, on one link? Sorry. No, one, one, links link? are, one link's are oh, 10 oh, foot only. Oh, sorry. I'm, I, yeah. Correct me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was thinking Aquabus. Mm -hmm. No, one link cables come in six foot, right? We have 10 foot. 10 foot. Yeah. So you get a, on, on one link cables, you have a male male one link cable um, that's 10 feet and a male female cable that's 10 feet. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, you just got to bind it up a little bit. That's 180 a, foot custom cable in Miami, Florida. Uh, yeah, you're living on the edge. Uh, so, Chris, um, I would recommend, honestly, to put some device in between that 180-foot cable and boost that signal. Um, you may be okay today, but in a year or two from now, you might be having some issues. Yeah. So. Uh, let's see here. Ah, here we go. This is, there's a couple of them here. Uh, same question. I saw this one earlier, too. Uh, this is definitely, can you actually make Fusion have a separation for the expansion or second tank? Well, we're going to talk about how Paul arranges these things on here. Mm -hmm. We definitely have thought about this. Um, I, you know, I absolutely love that you're asking the question because uh, I, I'd like to see that in Apex Fusion too, is just to have tabs or some other kind of additional features for when you have those second tanks. Uh, so certainly go out and keep posting, you know, about that, that you want to see that or see if anybody else does. And, you know, maybe we'll be able to get that pushed through in, in some of our future updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at this time, though, um, I have a pretty good method to be able to kind of keep that all mm -hmm. straight for you. Okay, with what we have. Uh, so. Another question, what's the max extension on a one link? 20 feet? Uh, you can, on one link, you cannot go more than 20 feet on a single run. Right, so, so uh, that means that uh, if you have a dose, you can connect it up one link with the male male cable that comes with your dose, and then the male female extension cable that you can so buy separately. So I have separately. a wave, and I have an extension cable. I can't use that on my wave. You can use that on your wave because the wave cable is ten feet long, and then it's the fifteen feet long. Uh, I thought it was ten. No, it's five it's meters. Fifteen. Uh, you can use the extension cable on the wave. Gotcha. One extension cable. <laughs> only one extension cable. I think that's the best rule of thumb. Only one extension, only one extension cable. Uh, only one extension cable on the wave. Okay. On the one link. All right. So now go, Paul. Now that I've interrupted your train of thought. Let's... No, no, no. I, I, Terrence, if... It's going to take a lot more Paul's for you gonna, to... Paul's going to miss the next uh, episode of Let's Talk. Read. Yeah. Paul's going on vacation, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, anyhow, so... Again, this is going to be all on the fly, all right? And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of walk you guys through the connections, okay? okay? Then we'll get into the Fusion dashboard and go to Brady Bunch mode and, okay. and show you guys kind of do that. So I have a extension cable here, okay? okay? And, um, and then I have a male-male cable, and that's connected to an energy bar 4. The context that I'm using here is I'm going to set up a water change station, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, in that water change station, I want to have an energy bar 4. Good choice. And then I want to have a um, temperature uh, temperature probe monitor my water temperature, of course. right? So it can be the same temperature as my tank. Mm -hmm. The salinity, you know, um, you could use a salinity probe for it, but usually I just like to double check with the refractometers and things like that. Oh, you know what's cool though? You could even put an alert in for your like water change station when mm -hmm. it gets to the right temperature. You get like an alert. Yeah, exactly. Oh, how cool is that? You could do that. I'm sure somebody's doing that already. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect it now. <laughs> all right. And um, I'm going to watch the uh, status light on that energy bar 4. I'm not going to pick it up because I have everything all nice and neat. But I'm going to wait till the status light turns green. Once the status light turns green, okay, that means that it is connected up to the system. Okay. okay? When it's flashing yellow, that means that it's still being acquired by the system. Or if it continues to flash yellow, something's not going right. If you have another Aquabus cable, try that. Or contact our support team. So what's yours flashing over there? Uh, this one is now solid green. It's ready to go. Okay, good. Okay? So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up a PM1 module. Okay? Uh -huh. And this is when I would recommend getting one of our one-foot Aquabus cables. That's what I was talking about. Okay? The one-foot Aquabus cables are great for wire management purposes. Um, when you're basically, you have all of your modules on a board or something like mm -hmm. that. They can all be close to each other. There's a three-foot cable that comes with the PM1. Right, but the one foot and that's going to fit most people's needs. But when you when you're really trying to make it look good, you might you want to pick really up a couple cool of these. Boards and you want to connect things together, make it look mm -hmm. clean. You get those one foot. The cables. one foot cables can really do that. I think we had somebody asking for like an eight inch or six inch cable. Yeah, I, we have been asked for a six inch one, and I just don't think the market's there for that. You know, uh, you'd be so surprised. so uh, and then I'm generally. 
What I like to do for connection to Terrence is I like to try to connect everything up to my energy bars, okay. right? So I always want to go direct to the energy bar. So you like a star configuration as yes. opposed to a daisy chain configuration. Yes, and the reason being is I feel like I have more control over them. Okay. You know, um, I know that kind of every that the energy bar is typically my hub. Right, and so I can, and I maybe will get my label maker out, and I'll label. This is the Aquabus cable that goes to the PM1. Okay, and um, that way I don't get lost okay. or confused or anything like that. And we can see that the module then goes green. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's basically now we have um, you know our quarantine setup set up all water done. station. Our water station set up all done. Okay, um, now the second thing we want to do is, um, you know, set up a frag tank or a quarantine station. Uh -huh. Both of those are pretty much going to be the same, okay? Those are probably going to need an, one of our energy bar 8s or energy bar 832, right. okay? The difference between an energy bar 8 and an energy bar 832, the pri there's two basic primary, well, three primary differences. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I just start thinking of all the great things about the EB832. Right. Big difference in just in terms of how they're built. Okay, the Energy Bar 832 has eight relayed outlets. Okay. okay? These are, um, you know, mechanical relays that flip on and off. Whereas the Energy Bar 8 has two mechanical relay outlets and two and six soft start outlets. Those two, right? right? Yeah, the last two, four and eight, are um, the mechanical relays. And soft start outlets, um, we needed to use a lot before, you know, DC pumps and well, things like I think, that. Yeah, people, they, I think. AC pumps, a lot of people are using them, especially in closed loops and yes. stuff. And so they were turning on and off those AC pumps a mm -hmm. lot. And that was uh, really, really uh, banging hard. hard on the pumps. But we don't really use AC pumps all that much anymore. So, or closed loops. Yeah, yeah, or closed loops. So the need for uh, the soft start outlets weren't there as much. And the bad part about soft start outlets is they can't deal with those devices, those 10, the 5 low. watt devices, yeah, low, you know, low, low, amperage. Low, low amperage devices. Um, so the other big difference between the energy bar eight and energy bar 832 is you get power monitoring per outlet mm -hmm. on the energy bar 832 which I like to say is kind of a crystal ball into terms of how my equipment is running right you know which I've gone through power monitoring in the past we did exactly so I'm not gonna go into that but um, I love that feature oh, um, yeah. knowing what it is and then finally you have a one link built into the EB 832 so if your device needs dose if you need one link if you need a return pump on that quarantine tank uh, you know you already have a one link module there where you can so a lot of stuff involved yes. although Rosano here says not enough ports on the energy bar for too many connections yes I think maybe he's talking about the aqua bus that there's there's three there's three on the energy bar 832 and there's six on uh energy, on bar, eight. energy bar eight yep um but again in that situation you could just daisy chain, daisy chain. it but that's, that's just a preference of paul's so. yes that is just a preference of mine and so in this situation here though i'm going to go ahead and connect up the energy bar 832 next it doesn't so, mess it up nancy don't worry she says this is gonna something gonna go wrong if she daisy chains no no it, it doesn't so Aquabus is Aquabus is Aquabus. Yes. It doesn't matter where you connect it. People always are worried of disconnecting it and reconnecting it, turning off their apex, you know, any of these things. No, the, the, the system remembers, you know, what that device it's is. It's just a Paul preference. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to connect that other energy bar, and what am I, and let's say that was 60 feet away too. Okay. I'm going to go make sure that I plug the Aquabus cable from my energy bar 832 into my energy bar eight, into my uh, energy bar four. Right. So right? you go energy bar to energy bar. Exactly. Again, you want the long lengths. You want to. You go from your energy bar, your apex, the long length, and then the next thing that you connect it to should be another energy bar. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And um, on the energy bar eight thirty two and our new devices, um, orange is the new green. Ooh. You like that? Yeah, orange is the new green. So uh, when the status light goes solid orange, um, you know that it is connected and it is working okay. the way that it should. Okay. Now on that other tank too, I'm going to also add a PM1 module, but I don't want to add that yet, Terrence. Okay. And the reason why I don't want to add this PM1 module yet is because I already added that for my water for my water mixing station, mm -hmm. and I need to make sure I know which PM1 so is which in time. my configuration. One at a time. Yeah. And so just to kind of get started, so now we're kind of to the configuration point. So this is a good spot for me to ask you another question. Great. If you don't mind. Yeah, please. Okay. So, so how many modules can I have? Because I know my dose is two modules, right? Yes. Well, okay. No, it's no, one. It's not. Oh, it's one. Dose See, is I get one. confused yes. all the time. Dose is one module. Uh, waves are one module, right? Mm -hmm. Is anything two modules? Uh, no, nothing is two modules. No but single device it gets. Two modules. Uh, but I mean, it gets a little hairy, like when you're talking about a wave starter kit. 
right? Okay. So that comes with two waves and a one ah, link. Ah, there you go. So that's right? three modules. So you get the function of two waves, but the one link is the module that you Got connect it. those waves with. Got it. Right? So if you don't have an EB832 and you want to add waves, the wave starter kit is the solution to do that. Okay. So how many do I get? How many can I put, can I put on my system? So um, the version of firmware that is out there right now allows 29 in the firmware. Okay. Okay. But um, there is a new version of firmware that's going to be coming that ding, will ding, add ding. that will add uh, 50. Okay. If you are at 29 and you want to add more, hold on. Hold on. Is it 50? But one of those is the apex, so it's really 49. It's 49. Thank you. Terrence. <laughs> so um, so uh, if you have 29 modules now and you want to go to 50, do that. Could the system handle more? Absolutely. But it's again, it, it comes back to that point of manageability. Right, and at the point you're at 50 modules, I don't feel that that's manageable. Exactly. Anymore. Look, Nancy even said only 29. L O L L O L. Well, I mean, it's adding up real quickly. There were some questions earlier about IOTA and things like that. Uh -huh. So each IOTA device you add is a module, right. right? So if you have, you know, eight primes over your tank, well, there's eight modules right mm -hmm. there, right? Um, and you know, there well, that's some... a good point too. Those are modules as well. Yes. Every IOTA device is its own module. Yeah, and added. you know, there were some questions earlier too. Well, how come you know we have IOTA, which is wireless? Mm -hmm. How come you know we connect up to the Ecotech stuff, which is wireless, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, again, right? That is uh, well, going it's a choice with... of somebody else's device that right. exists. So if it exists already, and and with that being said, you know, I get home, I say, you know, turn on my lights. Sometimes one of my little outlet Wi-Fi switches aren't, isn't connected to my network anymore, right? right? I, the only way that I can make that right is to go and plug it and plug it back in again, right? With a heater, I don't want to have to worry about unplugging and plugging it back in again right. for control, oh, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, so for hard. lights and things like that, I think it's okay. You know, for pumps, I'm even a little bit more wary, but, um, you but know. I think we've got very few people that are going to hit the 49 mark. We yeah. do have some out here. Chuck Lee says, you know, he's like, oh, you run out quick. You do. If you're like some of our control freaks and we love you um, <laughs> and you get to 49, you know, start letting us know and we're going to see what we can do mm -hmm. uh, to make it happen. But for right now, it's 49 modules. And uh, let's go to Brady Bunch mode and see what you're going to do on here. Great. Sounds good. All righty. Okay. Demo. Here we go. Yay. Ooh, okay. So um, once you add a bunch of new devices, mm -hmm. okay, um, you're going to get this feature right up in the right-hand corner, right, where it shows new tiles. Right. Okay. This lets this lets you show um, where um, uh, where these tiles are stored until you put them on your dashboard. Okay. So right now, this it's like your quiver of apex goodness. Exactly. Um, so right now, right, you can see that um, you know this is a just a one tank system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there'd be some things I'm going to do right off on the on the beginning to kind of make it a a three tank system, right? Because we're adding the water mixing station and we're adding the um, you know frag tank, okay. right? And so the first thing I'm going to do is I like to um, essentially kind of move everything. A get rid of the things I'm not using. Declutter. Declutter. Yes. So get rid of the things that I'm not using. Uh, you can see that this dose is right here. I like to keep those kind of at the top. I like to move my... So, I think another good point, Paul, mm -hmm. is what are you using most to access your, exactly. uh, your dashboard? That's mm -hmm. a key component, I think. Because yes. if you're always accessing it in portrait mode on your mobile phone, you're in a situation where you have one column, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're using it on a tablet like you are right here, you might get three columns, you might get two columns. Yes. And so generally what I like to do is I like to keep my probes over to the left-hand side. I like to keep all my probes over at the left-hand side, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in this setup here, I'm going to put my tank information right at the top, right? My tank temperature, my tank pH. Obviously, this isn't a system set up. But, um, you know, and maybe get rid of the things that I don't really care about, um, you know, in terms of watching them all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do, and if I ever want to bring those back out again, I can just see those up in my unused tile bin. Right. Okay. Um, and then the outlets control. I typically don't put outlet control in a place that it's super available, right? Because most of my things are all going to be automated through my feed cycles. Or if I do have a few outlets that I do control on a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep those right at the top. And those are kind of things that do multiple things. Yeah. If you're not using sense? it very often, declutter it, right? Right. Exactly. Because also you have an opportunity of of inadvertently turning something to on or to off, yeah. you know, if it's down there on your dashboard. And then, um, and then basically right from here, we can see the devices that are all new. So here's that temperature on that PM1. So this is going to be my water mixing station temperature. 
and this is going to be a water mixing station pH, but I'm not going to mo monitor the pH on my okay. water mixing station. Um, there's the switches that you were talking about for the IO breakout box, the ones that say SWX. I'm not going to hook up switches in this situation, but if I was, for example, pull down the one you need. The, maybe the one that I need, okay? And then uh, these are the outlets. For this, I'm just going to maybe pull down one outlet or one or two outlets because I only want the mixing pump and the heater, right? Okay. And then maybe if I wanted to add a solenoid valve, I would do that as well, okay? And you ask, well, Paul, the solenoid valve only has the only the DC24 connection. We sell the power supply separately, so mm -hmm. you could connect that up to your energy to bar for as well. Energy bar for yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, on my second tank, right, you can see that I have that on there. And this is that, this is the second set of outlets right here where okay. that, are, that have the seven, okay? I'd pull down the outlets that I'd want, and I'd probably put those outlets in my third column, okay? Do, do, do. See better over here. Yeah, I hear you. And then finally, this is one of the outlets, the things I really care about for that third tank, that new energy bar 832. Okay. okay. And right now it isn't connected. It doesn't have power. That's why sure. you have the exclamation point on it. And then we can kind of close it up. All right. So then the next thing to do, Terrence, when you're kind of setting up these mm -hmm. multiple things is you immediately want to identify the probe that you're going to work with. Okay. And the way that you do that is see this gear right next to the temp X6, mm -hmm. right? You can just click on that or there is a task. But um, in this situation here, I'm just going to rename that to to do to uh, temp water or temp station, right? right? To uh, now I'm going to name it H2O. So temp H2O, which tells me that's the temp for my H2O station. Okay. Okay. Um, you don't need to calibrate it. You could if you wanted. If you had a NIST calibrated thermostat, you could calibrate against it. We do. Yeah. Uh, we do. We do calibrate those before they go out. So questions. Okay. So in, so you would you just basically have to do the rename. Um, you want to try to keep it the six letters because mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to see it on there better. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go in and, and obviously change the, um, the alert settings on there if you wanted an alert setting as well. Exactly. So okay. again, those alert settings are all... Let's see if we have a couple questions. Please. Let's, let's try to do that. Okay. Somebody, look at that. This is uh, Joao jo Pedro Fonseca. I hope I said your name correctly. From Macau. Awesome. Uh, looks like somebody that's Portuguese that's living in Macau. Mm -hmm. um, when do you have an 832 bar with UK sockets? Uh, I love that question. It comes up all the time. Uh, we don't know. Who knows? We may be working on it, um, but it's definitely something that we know everybody out there wants. Yep. There's um, no doubt about that. It's just a matter of getting around to it. Trident is definitely sucking down a lot of our engineering time right now. Um, I have two tanks on my apex. They are 90 feet away from each other. No issues at all. Great, awesome. Derek. Awesome. Uh, let's see. See anything else here, Paul, that looks like a good question? No, I think we're... No? No. Oh, somebody was asking about backup. I know that was in there. Is there a way to back up the code in future? That, that'll be a whole episode I'll do sometime. Okay. So okay. I guess the answer is yes? Yes. And that's a whole other episode. Yes. Okay. Yes. Maybe right when you come back on vacation, that'll be a good one yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can we talk about controlling the hydrolytes? We can do that in another episode as well. Yeah. Um, oh, are you going to fix the renaming of probes or switches on the Apex Classic? I don't understand what that means So I think exactly. he, he wants to rename his probe and his switches in Apex Fusion. Okay. Right? That's a feature that's only available on the new Apex. Um, Again, guys, it just comes down to resources in the Apex Classic, mm -hmm. right? There isn't, I don't know a better word to say this, Terrence, but there isn't a lot, there, it's, 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 it's old tech and it's maxed out, right? We yeah. have put as much as we can into that Apex Classic. And how, old, how old is the uh, Apple Watch? I have no, what, 2013? Yeah, so the Apple Watch is, I don't know, five, six years old. Have you used, a, have you used an Apple Watch I 1? I did have an Apple Watch 1. Have, and you, have you tried to use the Apple Watch it's so, 1? It was so slow. It was so, so slow, and I mean, I couldn't use it anymore. You, so that's you what know? I mean. Technology yeah. moves on, and the Classic works great, but there are going to be some setback, setbacks, you know, compared yeah. to the, the newer one, for it, sure. It's just, it's, we've, we've done everything we can with what's available. So <laughs> one of the ways I know also people like to organize on the, um, the dashboard, if they're using three columns all the time, mm -hmm. they'll put one tank on every column. Yes. Right? Um, 
Go ahead. Because then they can really easily visually see what's going on. I know other people um, like create breaks mm -hmm. using you know like the the clock or the the notes thing or what have you, so that when they're on a single one, they know exactly where it is. Happens to be there. So uh, basically, there's kind of two ways to do it, Terrence. Right? You can go with the different columns, right? And most any phone now can handle two columns when it goes into landscape mode. Okay. Okay. So that's a good thing to consider. And then the second, so uh, what you kind of do, sorry, I did, did tap right there. So what you kind of do is you actually set your tanks up horizontally. Right, mm -hmm. so it ends up that your you know your readings are over here, and maybe your control mechanisms are right over to the second column. Okay. Okay. Um, when you are in the third column, and the third column is that's where you kind of put all of your unimportant stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first two columns have all your important things, and you maybe break it by one of the graphic tiles, like with the dose or the EB eight thirty two. So you, you know can, what you, you kind of your mind starts to know where there's a stopping point. On exactly. It. Exactly. Um, what I like to do personally is I like to use the two column mode, right, and I like to kind of stack my equipment, right, so they go side by side mm -hmm. with each other. Um, that's typically one of the good ways to do it. Um, so essentially to do that, right, I would, um, you know, I would, uh, I would take this EB830, this, uh, this, where is it? I would take these dose outlets here, and then I'd put some other outlets right above them over here. Oh, I gotta turn that off. Go like over here like this. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, the second, now the final thing we need to consider too is there's still one device we haven't connected here, Terrence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's our second PM1. And now that we've named the temp okay. H201, we Let's can add that in that in. second one in. And it takes about 30 seconds or so for that to show up into Apex Fusion. Okay. But um, once it's connected, it should work just fine. Matt Giles joined us late. He says, wow, didn't hear my notification. And then uh, Hanif said, uh, are these or will these videos be posted on your website? Not on our website, but they will be on our Facebook page under videos. And they're also in our YouTube channel. Um, hopefully the YouTube channel gets the uh, audio synced correctly this time so I don't have to go back and do that in post. Yeah. We'll see. So. Okay, so you plug the other one in. Mm -hmm. Now it has to kind of wait for Apex Fusion to see it, right? Right, right. And so it, once Apex Fusion sees it, right, where we can pull down a, I'm not going to wait for it right now, but okay. we can pull down basically any tile that would represent it. And I'm just going to say for now that this would be the second temperature probe, this PHX6. Now these could be also ORP, right? Mm -hmm. Because the pH, the PM1 can be a pH or ORP. Correct, Terrence. And then I could rename that pH, you know, say is temperature to the tank temperature of the uh, other PM1 module. Okay. You know, um, and that's pretty much kind of how it all works. Uh, well, see, once it's pretty simple. Once I mean, you start referencing them to, once you name everything first, especially name your probes, then when you're writing your programming or mm -hmm. configuring your heater, you're going to go to a task, right? And you're going to go to Always use those tasks. heater setup. Okay, and I click next, and you're going to select the outlet. Okay, the sevens are my energy bar 832. That was the last energy bar I added. Okay. The fives are my energy bar four, and the twos are the, for my first tank. Now, okay. Now, what you can always do, uh, you know, especially with the energy bar uh, 832, another nice feature about it is it does have outlet indicators on it. Mm -hmm. So if you went in and renamed a bunch of stuff and forgot what went where, you can turn on or off manually some outlets and mm -hmm. see the LED on the 832 light up. So you can select you can select an outlet, mm -hmm. name heater, okay? Then you select the temperature, okay? And in this situation here, I'm gonna select this temperature H2O, okay? And then, you know, I set the on and off temperatures there. It's gonna tell me exactly how it's gonna operate and I send it off. Boom, you've just set up your secondary tanks. Yeah, temperature, the temperature control on the secondary control tank is done. Temperature control the heater is done. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's take one more, one or two more questions and let's bug out of here, Paul, because we are at the one hour mark now. We don't want to make this too long. We've been babbling for a long time. We do that, um, don't we? Yeah, I know. Uh, let's see here. About uh, Max. Max renaming. Uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. If I'm not answering a question, you know, and you're asking here, just send us an email. Yeah, ask us it, through Facebook. Ask it afterward on Facebook yeah. or on YouTube. We're, so. we're, I have an Apex and an Apex Junior. The Junior always comes up first by default. Is there a way to change that? I think that's the naming and the Apex Yeah, version. yeah. So that's super easy. Um, all we had got to do... Chad Richardson's question. Oh, so this is a Junior. Um, what I would recommend doing is changing the name on the Apex. 
Right. Okay. Um, because you, you can do you can do that in Fusion. You can't do uh, do the name changing in Apex Fusion for Apex Juniors. because yes. It's an Apex Classic essentially. You could do it on the display module or or Correct. the local interface. But you um, all you got to do is click on the Wi-Fi button. Okay. You click on configuration. Click on the network. Right. And then rename it. And so I like to put zeros at the front of mine and that's because I want to be right at the top of the list for these things that I do and like this. And I put like exclamation point zero. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, there's this there's this game that well, we play here in the... I don't think you can put exclamation point on the, on the, on the Apex no. stuff, but yeah. But there is this game that we play to whichever Apex is going to be at the top of the list for those Apexes that we zero, share. Zero, zero, yeah, zero, yeah, yeah. zero, yeah. zero. We do folder naming conventions, you guys don't even know. Um, but. Um, Okay. Uh, that's how you rename that's it. Now with the junior, you would need to go into the classic interface and rename it, rename there, it there in the host name. I think that's it, Paul. We're going to close this one out, okay. man. I hope this was a great episode for you guys. Again, April 9th, we're going to have our next Let's Talk Reef episode here in the new facility that we have. And we've just expanded on to the next uh, part of the building over and have a new studio. It's pretty cool. Um, on top of that, we're going to be at Aquashella and at Reefapalooza mm -hmm. doing a little thing right at our booth for Let's Talk Reef. So if you have an Apex story, you want to talk about your tank, you just want to talk about fish, ask questions about corals, I'll be there doing interviews. If you sit down with me at Let's Talk Reef, I'll have some swag for you. It's going to be a great event. Uh, Aquashella and Reefapalooza the next two weekends. Thanks so much for joining us here, guys. As always, um, questions, we can put them, uh, we'll get them after the fact. I try to answer all of them that I possibly can. And join us next time and let everybody know. Share it. Yes. Sharing's caring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. And, uh, you know, enjoy those fish. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.